Year 7 pupils at St Edward's School in the London Borough of Havering are being introduced to number sequences and algebra through juggling. It's the idea of Head of Maths, Ian Valance. We're completely rewriting the scheme of work. All right? So at the moment we've got eight lessons in Year 7 and 8 to, uh, to teach the curriculum. We reckon we can get into seven. Ian and his maths and science colleagues have been discussing ways of enriching the maths curriculum. So is the plan for them to be quite student-centred where they're doing investigative type, type work? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it is a completely open agenda, really. I mean, it's, you know, it's basically um, we're creating a, one lesson per fortnight where we can um, mm. do something which is more creative or uh, rich activities of a different nature, really. We just, uh, it is definitely open to, to ideas, isn't it, yeah. from, for anyone? Yeah. But you should and one of these ideas this is juggling maths. To start the session, Mr Valance reminds the class about the number sequences involved in sets of points, lines and regions. Does it increase by three, so it'll be ten? Does it increase by three, so it'll be ten? It's a number pattern. It's gone from four to seven to ten. We can just check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, I must have missed one somewhere. Where's the other one gone? There it is. Ten. Lovely. Ten. Okay. So you're absolutely right. Regions. They're on there now, but... Regions. Would it go up by two? Does it go up by two? Eight. Four, six, eight. Let's just check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And number patterns are what mathematicians are all about. And I've invited Mr Hyde along, because Mr Hyde is going to demonstrate to us how a juggler would use number patterns. Thank you very much. OK, our goal today, apart from teaching you to juggle and having lots of fun, is to look at the number patterns of juggling. With number patterns for juggling, you have a number that represents how long the ball is in the air. So this, for example, is a one, because it's almost no time at all. It's a very short time from one hand to the other. That would be a two. A little bit more time. A three is about eye height, and a four goes over the head. So what number pattern do you think represents that juggling pattern? What do you think? Yep. Three, one. Three, one. Excellent. Right. Just uh, while we're thinking about it, what would the number pattern be for that three ball juggle? It's called a cascade. Have a think. It's two numbers, one for the throws from my right hand, one for the throws from my left hand. Yes? Is it 3-3? Three, three? Excellent, it's 3-3. Three, because three. all the throws from my right hand go to a, a sort of height of 3, and all the throws from my left hand go for a height of 3. As well as having fun, the pupils are encouraged to think about what each hand is doing while they're juggling and the numbers involved. Don't throw them quite so high. It's easier. If you throw them a little bit lower, they don't go so far out. Try again. That is all good. So what you've got to do is this one's got to come up to three, and as it drives out, this one's got to come up to three, which is exactly what you were doing before. Yeah? When the ball lands, you're throwing in front of it, like that. You've got to throw it to here, and then that one as well, OK? So throw, yeah. That's, that's it. Right, so this, for me, is the favourite bit of the lesson, because this is where the maths takes over from the juggling. And I just stand there being the mathematician, and Mr Hyde stands there having to be the juggler, providing you can suss out the number patterns, OK? What I'm going to ask Mr Hyde to do to start off with is a little bit of two-ball juggling, but he's only allowed to use one hand. Watch what happens to the balls and see if you can work out the number pattern for two ball juggling with one hand. OK, I'm going to have to throw them a bit higher. The only way I'll fit them in. Let's try it. OK, number pattern, someone. Number patterns. Yeah. Is it four? Four? What's he doing with his other hand? Because he's not using his other hand. Four zero. Four zero, well done. So a two ball juggling pattern could be a three one or it could be a four zero. Bit of very easy maths. What do you notice about these two number patterns? 
that one, they add together and make the same number. They both add together to make four. Keep going, guys. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. This is where the thinking comes into it. Challenge Mr Hyde, yeah. If you take one number off of one side, you've got to add it to the other side. If you take one number off of one side, you've got to add it to the other side. So in theory, what else could Mr Hyde do with a two-ball juggle? Yeah. A two-two. A two-two. Is it possible to do a two-two, Mr Hyde? It should be possible. A two-two <coughs> would be a throw for a height two from both hands. So they should just cross over like that in the middle. Two-two. Two-two. There you go. Two-two. Right, now you can take the third ball, Mr. Mr. Hyde, and it's challenge Mr. Hyde time. All right, Mr. Hyde, we've already seen, can do a 3-3. Three, three. Now, can you tell Mr. Hyde what to do with a juggling pattern that's not a 3-3? Three, three? Let's have a look. Yes? A 4-2. A 4-2. Why do you say a 4-2? Because you take one off of that and then you put it on the... You take one off of that and you put it on this side. Absolutely. What do you notice about four... 2 and 3, 3. <coughs> they both add up to make 6. They both add up to make 6. So, Mr Hyde, a 4-2 juggling pattern. Any chance? Uh, I reckon so, but I think someone should be able to tell me what it looks like. What would a 4-2 juggling pattern look like? Yes? Is it, um, the two balls in this side go up 4, yeah. and the other one goes 2. Across. OK, so you're saying all the throws from one hand are going up to a four, yeah. and the ones coming from the other hand are going to a two. Yes. Yeah, so OK, well, let's try it. So we've got a four going that way, right, so a four, two, four, two. Yeah, that works. Keep going. Keep going. Must be able to do a... Five, one. You must be able to do a five, one, Mr Hyde. If you can do a four, two, a five, one should be no problems at all. So five, one is a height of five from the right, one from the left. It'll look like that. How cool is that? Now we're thinking, now we're on the road. Yeah, what else can you think? I uh, could do a 6 0. You should, be able to, <laughs> you should be able to do a 6 0, Mr. Hyde. So a 6 0, <coughs> in theory, would be a height of 6, but only using one hand, but still three balls. So let's try it. There you go, 6 0. Keep going. Ah, um, oh, now we're a bit stuck, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, someone's with the bright eyes gone in. There isn't any more. There isn't any more. You're joking, there's thousands more. Yes. Yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three. No, one, two, three, Mr. Hyde. That means you have to have three arms. Yeah, though. absolutely fine with three arms. <coughs> but we're restricted. When we find a three arm juggler, we'll be able to do that. Keep going. Oh, uh, four, three. Four, three. What does four, three add up to? Seven. Seven. But we've only got four here, six here, so we can't. Oh, have... oh go on in. Five, three. 5-3. What does 5-3 add up to? 8. A 5-3 adds up to 8. So what are you telling Mr Hyde to do? Um, throw. Get another ball. Get another ball. Absolutely. Get another ball. Because can you see this? Look, this is two ball juggling. Adds up to four. <laughs> Therefore, three ball juggling. Three ball juggling. Three adds up to six. six. Four ball juggling up to eight. Now we can see how good Mr Hyde really is. Can you do a 5-3? Might take a couple of goes. Let's have a look. There we go. 5-3. 5-3. Keep works. going, guys. What else? Yes. 4-4, four, four. Four, four, Mr Hyde. 4-4 four, four. would be fours from both sides, like that. Keep going. Yes. 2-6. We'll call it a 6-2. Like but a 6-2 would be even higher from one side and little throws across from the left. It looks like that. 5-5. Five, 5-5. Five. Five, five. What does 5-5 five, five add up to? 10? Yeah. This doesn't add up to 10, so therefore he's got to get another ball. We're going big time now. So 5-5 five, five in theory is throws of 5. Whoa, Whoa, that's not bad. And he should be able to do a... 10-0. Ten 10-0. Zero. Ten zero. <laughs> and he should be able to do a... 9-1. And he should be able to do a... 8-2. And he should be able to do a... 7-3. And he should be able to do a... 6-4. And he should be able to do a... Five fives, which we started off with, which is absolutely right. Way there you go. Near enough. Here's a question for you. I'm going to get Mr Hyde to juggle the bean bags in this box. All right? Can somebody give me a number pattern that he could juggle? What do you reckon? Eight to two. Why do you say eight two? Because it's difficult and it's with five balls. So, so how do you know I've got five balls in here? I don't, but it's just a guess. 
Actually, just a guess. It's a wrong guess, unfortunately. Yes? Uh, two, two. How do you know how many balls I've got in here? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not going to allow you to guess anymore. I need an exact answer. No guessing. Do you know? No. What do we normally do in maths when we don't know what a number should be? Yes? Algebra. Algebra. So instead of calling this a number, we're going to call it a letter. Pick a letter for me. Um, T. T. All right. So we have got T number of bean bags in my box. So what are the numbers going to add up to that Mr Hyde is going to have to juggle? OK, have a look at the numbers on the left-hand side and the numbers on the right-hand side. Now we're into some algebra here. What do you think? T times 2. T times 2. How do we normally write <coughs> T times 2? 2T. 2T. Now it starts getting tricky. Can anyone suggest for me, then, a number pattern that Mr Hyde could juggle? Can you suggest a number pattern that Mr Hyde could juggle? TT. TT, absolutely. TT would work. Now, if we go all the way back, somebody suggested a way of changing this 3-3 three, three to another number pattern. What, what was your suggestion? We took a number from one side and added it to the other. We took a number from one side and we <laughs> added it to the other. So give me another number pattern that Mr Hyde could juggle by taking... Go on then, try it. T-0. No. What happens when you take one away from T? What do you get? Right at the back, when you take one away from T, what do you get? T minus one. T minus one. So we could do a T minus one, and we could also do, on the other hand... T plus one. A T plus one. OK. And therefore, we should be able to do a... What else could we do? A T minus two. A T minus two. And a T plus two. And a T plus two. OK, absolutely. Until eventually what you get down to is you get down to what we started off from, which was 2t in one hand and 0 in the other hand. And that's how jugglers talk. Let's have some ideas. What did you learn last time from the juggling lesson? What did you learn? Um, I learned that um, juggling was not just based on like, entertainment and stuff. It's like uh, mathematical and it can, you have to use your coordination and there can be lots of different ways on how to juggle. We learned that maths actually had something to do with juggling. Juggling is one of the, the least things that you would associate with maths. What did you learn from the juggling lesson? I learned that I can't juggle. You learned that you can't juggle. Did you improve over the time? Yeah. Okay, what was it that helped you improve? Um, knowing how high and how long to keep it in the air. Knowing how long to keep it in the air and how high to throw it. Yeah. So in fact the maths was helping you out in your yeah. ability to juggle. Good. The, the main thing for me was that point where they made the realisation that even though they'd got everything with three balls, it was that sudden link, oh, we can now go to four balls. And once that link has been made, then it takes it into all sorts of different realms. Um, and if we can do that, we can go into negative numbers. And if we can do that, we can go into decimal numbers. Um, and that's, that's for me, was the, was the, the, the crux of the, of the, of the, uh, the lesson, that one link. <laughs>